Hi everyone. I have been making soap again. So I've making soap yesterday and I'm going to show you the process of making maple walnut fudge, which is here. I'm just about to cut this. So this is supposed to darken to like a nice tan colour, which I'm hoping it does so it actually looks like fudge. I mean, I don't, I don't want it to look like fudge, like you want to eat it, but I want that fudgy colour. Um, we had a bit of a mishap yesterday, which I didn't leave in the video. This was supposed to start off as Owlet's End soap, and the next soap that I will upload is of the making of Owlet's End. But this one was supposed to be Owlet's End when I started making soap yesterday. It was the first soap on my list. But I knocked over a whole jug of water and it went all over the floor, all over the counter, everywhere. So I'd already poured and taken my bath to a light tray, so it was just sat on here. So while I was having to tidy up all this water behind my counter, um, the soap batter was thickening up. So I'd got this one to make, which is why I made this one first, because I wasn't using any colour or any anything in it other than the fragrance. So this was the first up because of that little mishap. So just let it be known that in the background, things always go wrong and nobody's life is perfect. I'll just go have a sip of coffee, hold on. So you might think all these soap makers have got it together and they never show, you know, the only things that they do show are like all how great everything is. Well, in my case, it ain't. And I make mistakes and I drop things and I get in a mess and it happens. So that's that. So I'll show you the making of this one. It's very simple. It's just basically gonna be mixing it up, pouring, and there'll be some music involved in this one because um, I'm obviously talking about how it's end. <laughs> So that's all saved for the following video after this one. So this is just a simple video of the making of maple walnut fudge. So stay tuned. Okay. So this is going to go right to the top of this bucket. So I'm going to have to be really careful. Again. I'm going to just stick them this to a light trace. Okay, I've stirred this to a light trace and we're going to put in the fragrance. Now this fragrance discolours. This fragrance discolours so we're not going to put anything in it. I'm just going to put the fragrance in pour the soap and see how it darkens over time. Just give it a stir in. So it doesn't cause any acceleration or rising as far as the notes say. So we should be fine. Looks lovely. So yeah, what it's going to do is discolour to a light tan, which is probably for the best given the fragrance. It should look like fudge. We don't want food imitation, but it won't when it's cut into bars of soap anyway, but I want that fudgy colour is what I'm saying. So we'll leave this as it is. Yeah, that's a nice fragrance. Okay, just gonna get my moulds ready. Hold on a sec. Okay, I'm gonna pour these. I've just marked out where I can do my texturing, so. I just need to get this in the mould and then I can leave it for a second before I do like a bit of spoon texture, uh, texturing, I think that's what I'll do. Stayed a really nice consistency, nice and fluid without any 
acceleration at all and also no rising. It's a nice easy fragrance. These are going to be slightly lower bars as I'm making them lower and uh, chunkier bars. So yesterday was spent watching the Queen's funeral which went on for hours and it was really something to watch. You um, go about your daily business don't you, every day and you don't think about all the things that are going on in the rest of the country, really, in preparation for this event, you know, you never, we obviously knew that the Queen wasn't going to last forever, <laughs> unfortunately, but you, you don't realise how much work is having to be put in, in order to arrange all of the things that were required for yesterday. It's, it was just mind blowing, mind blowing. Even for us, you know, we live here, we know what the British do and how we are for Queen and country and now King and country. But, you know, like I say, when you're just going about your daily business, you're not thinking about what people are doing to organize such a massive, massive event it's just gone on for days and days and days and really you have no idea <laughs> what that entails i've thought about it in the past and just thought that you know this is all like rehearsed already it's it's got to be because she was getting on but i suppose regardless of what age a monarch is, you, they would have something in place anyway for what would be said, or how things would go, you know. But even seeing, even so, just seeing it yesterday, it's still, it makes you so proud of your country. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't feel the same way, and that's fine. You don't, we don't all have to be the same, you know. Same in any country. Some people are anarchy and some people are not. Some people are anti-monarchy and some people are not, but I'm not anti-monarchy. I think they do great things for our country and always have. So, you know, there's force and against. I understand each argument and I have friends who would think completely differently to the way that I do, but I have a respect for them as I hope they do for me and how I feel about things. It's um, probably a lot to do with upbringing as well not just uh, education, and I mean that on both sides, but um, my grandparents were service people and so you have this thing attached to your family from a young age and my grandma, oh we said yesterday, thank goodness she's my grandma's gone because for her to have seen the death of the queen <laughs> i think they'd have all died right along with her you know there's so there's that that era of women and men who went to war in the first and second world war um yeah well way more for queen and country than well not way more but you sort of you know what i'm saying they had much more of a queen and country attitude because of what they've gone through all together than we do these days. It's a different, it's a different world now, but you only hope that people can follow in the queen's footsteps because she really was amazing, you know, really was amazing. Anyway, we'll get off the topic of the queen because it's going to be uh, going on for days and days and days, <laughs> as we all know news is going to be bombarding us with constant images and stories and news and all that kind of thing it's going to go on for a long time so i'm just going to keep my head down and i'm actually watching the crown <laughs> on netflix today i decided to give that another another go because uh you know keeps that feeling alive somehow but i don't want to be watching the news all day 
Right, I'm gonna leave this for several minutes, I think, and then come back to it and do the texturing on the top. So give me a second. Okay. Right, so I'm just gonna do a little of this. I've left it too long, but it's, it's tough. <laughs> Did leave that too long, but never mind. I can just manage to get some texture in there. Oh, how annoying! I hate it when I do that. It's still quite soft at the side, you see. Ugh. God. Never mind. Never mind. Might benefit from bringing it in a bit from the other side as well, then. Well, I guess it kind of looks like fudge. <laughs> Made a right mess. That's better. It is a mess, but it'll do. It'll look fine when it's cut. And at least it's not completely rock solid. But yeah, I've left that for about maybe two minutes, three minutes too long. I was messing around in the kitchen. Never mind. Okay, so that is maple walnut fudge. And it looks like this. But I will be back to cut that shortly. Okay. Get it out of the mould. I did a 25% water discount yesterday and my batter thickened quicker than it does if I do a higher one. Seems to be a thing. I think it'd be the opposite way round, or I always thought it would be the opposite way round, and in some cases it, it is sometimes depending on the fragrance or the oils you're using to scent your soap or the additives and all that. It all makes a difference, which is why you can never really pinpoint one thing. You have to experience, um, let me just turn the sound off this blinking phone. You have to um, experience these things for yourself. You can't ask people why this has happened or why this has happened, because there's so many factors that go into soap making and why the results can be different to someone else's. It's all just so dependent on many things, like so temperature, fragrance, thickness of batter, oils used in the base recipe, all that stuff. It's all it's all relative, you know. Anyway, let's cut this nice and smooth. I'm still waiting for my cutter to come from for craft's sake. And I think it's going to be another two, about another two weeks before I get it. Which is okay. I can wait. But I'm having to uh, not do such a heavy water discount because of that reason. Because of this cutter. It doesn't like... If you remember, I said it doesn't like um, a heavy water discount. It breaks the wire, so that's why I'm having to drop it. Okay, so this looks nice. I think I might need to take that out a little bit. Hold on a sec. Okay, I've just made them as ever so slightly thicker. So I'm just having to slice down um, less fast. 
slower is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> because if you go at it hammer and nail, then that's where the problem occurs. So just be really careful. I did quite a few comments on that video when I made, um, was it Money Magic? It might have been that one. Um, other people have bought this cutter and other people have had exactly the same issue with the wires breaking and it not going all the way through the soap and so you know it's uh, it's just not the best which is a real shame but you know it's, it's just what it is it's okay it works but when you're banging out your soaps you need something a bit more reliable well I certainly do I can't be doing with breaking strings and you know Oh, I just can't. It takes up too much time in your day and you don't realise how much half an hour can really matter when you're trying to pack orders, get stuff, get stuff made and, you know, all that. <laughs> it can be really annoying. Nice soap. And it smells good. It smells similar to other fragrances I've used in the past. I mean, those fudgy, maple-y, um, nutty sort of fragrances all have a similar type of a scent. It's very homely and sort of autumnal. And I really like these kind of scents myself. But my favourite soaps of my own at the moment that I'm using are Money Magic. And my very favourite is called The Corners. And I didn't do a video on Call The Corners. It looks like this, actually. But it's a essential oil blend with some Brazilian yellow clay in it. And it's just the most soothing, calming bar of soap I've made in a very long time. I'll show you it, honey. Let me show you. So you one in the packet and one out of the packet. So it's very simple soap. I did like a white swirl in it. So it's very similar to the one I'm cutting right now. But it's essential oil. And there's the, the finished bar. Call the corners. So this one's from the Witchcraft collection. And that's still available. Soaps from that. And the ritual oils. I've done some anointing oils. Those are still all available as well. Soaps are running low. I only did a, a small release on that because uh, I was just testing the water really. Um, and I will be doing some more and sharing some more. But I haven't made up my mind what those are going to be yet. But I do, that's where my real passion lies is in my um, daily practice and bringing that into my soap businesses. I just feel free. <laughs> I feel like I've made the right choice. And um, yeah, I wasn't sure whether to do that or not, but I'm really glad that I did because. I've realised how much like attracts like, you know? I'm just going to turn that around that way so I can get that end piece. So you're going to be a bit wonky. So yeah, it's um, been quite interesting, people's comments on that. It's quite nice. So I should do some more of the witchcraft collection and use some more herbs and things like that that I find along the way and I will explain why I use them. Somebody sent me a sent me, left me a comment the other day asking if I would explain why I use certain herbs and where that's all come from and yes I will, I'll, next videos I do I'll tell you why and um, what I've learned along the way, it's only, you know, it's only what I've learned and picked up over the last, god how many years, 30 years of my life, it's just a part of me that I don't share online just because I don't like being judged and I know that's a stupid thing to say but it's, um, it's, YouTube can be such a bitchy place and you just have to be so careful who you tell what to and so a lot of my life I decide to keep private, you know, but then you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because you should be able to be open and screw what other people think, you know, that's my attitude to life is it doesn't matter what other people think, if you're happy doing you, you know, do whatever you do, then just continue doing what you do makes you happy and keeps you in alignment with yourself 
you shouldn't really worry what others think, but I sometimes I just can't be doing with the comments because you, you do get them. You do get them, so yeah, I'm just uh, a bit wary sometimes. Anyway, that's maple walnut fudge. And so the next video will be Owlet's End. So I will see you for that one. And I'll leave some pics of this at the end for you. Okay, see you.